Okay, here's a quick tutorial on how to uh, animate a mask path on an effect in Premiere. So you can see I've got a little clip here and drag that onto the timeline. Of course, that's going to create myself a, a, a new little clip there. Uh, and I'm going to zoom that thing in so that we can see it a little bit better. And what you can see is this is um, a little Audi race car coming around a wet racing track and it skids sideways. So the aspect ratio that you're viewing it at changes. So any mask that we draw around it is gonna to need to change shape. And this is what the tutorial is about. So we're gonna add an effect um, and then we're gonna put a mask around the effect. So go to the effects panel. Not even gonna worry about where I find the effect. I'm gonna type in the search box blur. That will find any effect with the word blur in it. So of course it will find Gaussian blur. And we can scroll down a bit and there's Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to drag and drop Gaussian Blur onto that clip on the timeline. Sure enough, that puts the Gaussian Blur effect on, but the settings will be probably be on zero. So we won't see much until we go to the effect control panel there. Now you can see that some of the uh, some of the things on here are expanded. So I'm going to close that down a little bit so it's a little bit less confusing. We can see the mask path controls there. You know, you can draw simple oval masks or rectangle masks, but we want the pen tool because we're going to draw a mask around this car. So clicking with the pen tool, not clicking and dragging, not doing anything fancy bezier curves or anything like that. I'm keeping this really simple. We'll be able to get away with this because um, we're going to feather the edges of the mask. You could do it a bit more complicated if you want to, but let's keep this nice and simple because it's a tutorial. So the important bit here is that I'm going over to the effects control panel and I'm taking the feather value up. You can see that appearing around the mask as the dotted lines. The dotted lines indicate the feathered region either side of the mask line. So now what I need to do is I need to start animating this mask. Now, of course, what I need to do is, I'm just tweaking that so it's a little bit tidier. Um, what I need to do is I need to make sure that it's the mask path that I'm keyframing. So you can see I'm clicking on the stopwatch here, um, and that turns on keyframing for the mask path. Now, what I need to do is I need to make sure I can see the mask, so I'm going to click on where it says mask 1. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down the timeline quite a long way until the mask doesn't fit. Now, now I can start moving those points. Now I'll need to click off and then click back on so I only move one control point. But you can see there that what I'm doing is I'm moving these back. The trick here is to move the playhead quite a long way down the timeline because what that will do is that will mean that um, all of the bits in between where the mask initially started at the start of the timeline and where we are now on the timeline, it's going to do it all for us. You'll see that when I move the playhead there. Um, if there were any problems, what I could do is I could leave the playhead halfway between those two points and tweak it a little bit. But as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job. So I'm going to move another long way down the timeline until the mask is off the car. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag those points on again. This is the trick. Don't be moving the playhead a tiny bit down the timeline and then moving those points. And then moving it a bit more and moving the points. Move it a long way and then move those points and it will sort it all out for you. You might have to tweak the odd bit in between, but nothing major. So I should be able to get away with going to the end of the timeline here and then just doing one last tweak to make sure that that mask is lining up with the car. You can see it's a little bit off there. You might need to tweak it a little bit, but I, I really am just doing an auto save there if you wondered what that little thing popping up was. Um, but you can see there, I'm really not having to move these points very much at all um, to get this mask to stay with the car. I've literally only had to put three points on the timeline to get that mask to stay with it pretty well. I think if I wanted to do a really sophisticated effect, I might add more points, might start using Bezier curves. But um, for the purposes of this tutorial, this is the technique that we're doing. So you can see there, scrubbing all the way from start to finish, that mask is staying with the car. So now let's put the blur effect on. So we're over to the effects control panel. You can see the blur is blurring the car. So I'm going to invert the, the, uh, the mask so that it blows the background not the car. Maybe a little bit over the top, I'm going to back that off a little bit. So now what we've got is we've got the background blurred and the car in focus and it will be difficult to tell that where that effect ends and where it starts because we're feathering the mask so we get a soft edge on the thing. So I'm clicking off that and you can see there it's not bad. You know, We could spend a bit more time on it but if I zoom in on that a little bit and play you through that you can see there's no really obvious edge of where that mask is. That was the bit with the feathering that we did.
But of course, what I can also do is I can have that effect kick in slowly because we can keyframe the, the, um, the blur in this effect as well. So I'll do that now. So we're back to the start of the timeline. And what I want to do is I want to take the blur in this effect completely off. Uh, and then I need to turn on the keyframing. So I'm hitting the stopwatch for blurriness. Then what I'm going to do when I've hit that stopwatch is I'm going to move about halfway down the timeline. And then because I've got the stopwatch on, if I change this value here, it keyframes it. So what we've got now, if I back this up down the timeline, you can see it starts off with no blur, but as it plays in, it kicks up and you can see that blurriness kicking in. So that's how you can mask an effect and that's how you can have the effect kick in. And you can see it's quite a sophisticated effect, even though it wasn't actually that hard to do. Like anything, once you know how the trick's done, it becomes easy. Hope that helped.